All right, so this tutorial is going to be on how to create uh, photorealistic views in um, in Revit 2014. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is, uh, at this point, we're just assuming that you have your 3D views created, and I've got a couple on here. Um, I've got view from the northeast corner. That's, that's probably a good one. This is the one we'll probably use. And then view in the lobby. So I've got an interior and an exterior view, uh, and I want to do a full photorealistic um, rendering of it. So the first thing you're probably going to want to do when you when you have this is probably change around some or at least take a look at what your uh your materials are for the um for the uh for your like walls and things like that. All right, so I'm gonna, let me select this exterior wall here. All right, and I'm going to go to edit type. All right, and it's just like I'm editing the structure of this wall. So I'm going to go to edit the structure of that wall. All right, so the finished material on this wall is this brick masonry here. All right, and so this is when you were first creating this view. Um, this is the material that you picked for that exterior wall. So I'm going to uh, go in and edit that material. Right, so the, most of you have probably already been to the materials browser here. All right, so here is that material, masonry brick. All right, so this is what it looks like. So right, you've you've seen it. This kind of has this pinkish color on there. And then when you look at it in elevation, it has this uh, surface pattern on here. If you go to the next tab, this is appearance. This basically controls what it's going to look like in that 3D rendering or that uh, 3D realistic uh, rendering. So it's going to look like this. This is the image file um, that we're using for that brick uh, on the exterior. So it's very similar to 3D Studio or, um, or some other rendering program where they usually have some sort of uh, JPEG image um, that they apply to the exterior of the material when you're rendering it. Okay, um, and you'll notice too that um, all of these materials basically have that. So there's usually for each of the materials that you have in your your model, you have this appearance tab, and the appearance tab is what really um, uh, controls what it's going to look like in a realistic view or a photorealistic rendering. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I can edit this. Uh, so if I don't like this particular brick uh, image file that I have for it, I can edit that by just selecting it here. So this is the uh, this is the PNG file that they're using. All right, and what it does is takes me then to the Revit's uh, material uh, browser or material folder. These are basically just series of uh, images that Revit has in its library um, for rendering uh, objects. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to thumbnails and see if I can get larger thumbnails. I don't know. All right, so I've got brick here. I'm going to use this one instead. This is kind of a nice brick here. This is more of an orange brick. All right, so I'm going to apply that. That's going to be my image file um, uh, for my my uh, brick on the outside. All right, and basically each one of these. Let me just kind of um, hit OK and load this in. All right, so OK. It's going to change the appearance of that brick to make it a little bit more orange, um, similar to the render that Im that uh, PNG image I just selected. All right, well, maybe not. Um, all right, so let me go to the Manage tab, and let's go to our Materials Browser. So all of these materials that we have load it, loaded into Revit um, have that Appearance tab, and there's different, uh, different materials have different properties that you can manipulate. For example, let me pick Carpet here and go to the Appearance tab. All right, so here you've got a, a, um, a a JPEG or a PNG image that's loaded into there, and that's basically what's going to render like. And you can create a bump map on that um, that's similar that'll give it more of a you know a texture to that to that uh, image. You also can have um, transparency, reflectivity. You can control that. So for example, if I go to Cast Brass and go to the Appearance tab here, there's you know different sets of controls to control the, uh, what that material looks like. All right, so. Um, Without going into a whole lot of detail on you know how to edit these materials, there's basically, um, but you can edit those materials. Uh, you can swap out if you don't like that particular uh, image file that's in there for that material. You can switch it out to something else. Um, I've created a couple in Photoshop uh, where, but the, the the issue you have with uh, with materials is they have to tile. So if you put one next to the other, they've got to kind of seamlessly go together. But um, that's basically what controls your materials in that 3D rendering. So you may go through here and say, well, I like that uh, column, but um, I want some really bright uh, red paint. So let's go. Here's the material I'm using for that. I'm using metal aluminum. All right, and its appearance is going to look like that. Uh, maybe I don't like that, so I'm going to say I want some sort of painted finish on that. All right, and let me go to paint. All right, and a color. Let's go with a, a real pretty red, but maybe not so 
so bright. There you go. Let's do that. That looks like a run nice color. I'm going to say OK. And then OK again. So then I changed my material to paint, and I edited the paint to give it that red color. So I'm going to hit OK. And it'll update it. So there it is. So it's updated. All right, so then I'm ready. So now I've kind of edited all my materials, and I've got everything looking the way I want it to look. Um, I'm going to add some shadows on here. Let's do that real quick. So add some shadows. All right, so then to render it, to get basically the render started, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the Show Render dialog box. So it's this little tea, teapot here on the view control bar. So I'm going to click on that, and that's basically where we're going to start our rendering from. All right, so basically to start the rendering, you just hit the Render button. But before we do that, I just kind of want to run through all these selections here that we can do. Um, so I can say my, my quality is going to be low. Um, it goes all the way up to draft, which is real, uh, which is real low quality, all the way up to best. Um, there's also custom and edit. I never use these two because usually best, high, medium, low, draft, those all work pretty good. All right, so let's just go with uh, low for right now. All right, then a resolution depends on what your output is. If you're going to print it at some point, you're going to probably want to crank the resolution up to maybe 300 um, dots per inch or uh, or something like that. So if I hit print. I can pick from 300 DPI, 600 DPI, 75 DPI for you know lower resolution, or if it's just going to be something you put on the internet or you're only going to see it on the screen, then it's going to then you can just click on screen. So if it's something you're going to actually put out and actually print, uh, I'd go with print and go with a higher resolution. Now um, render times basically go up the higher the DPI, the higher the resolution, um, the high, the longer it's going to take to render. So if you just have on screen mode, it won't take very long to render. Um, also, quality settings have a big impact on uh, render time. So if you set this thing all the way up to best, and you put this at 300 DPI, you'll see you in about two days, because it'll take about that long to render. Um, so some, a lot of times I'll do medium at 300 DPI or 150 or something like that. Um, so that usually does pretty good. All right, so that's basically your quality settings. That basically just controls the, the quality of the rendering. Then lighting. Um, lighting is basically you have a couple different choices here. Uh, exterior is basically split up into two categories, exterior or interior. All right, so if you're doing an exterior view, you want to pick one of these three exterior views. If you do interior renderings, um, you want to pick these three. And basically what it means by rendering is, is if you have walls on all four sides and a ceiling, then that's an interior view. If you try to, um, if your camera is placed on the interior of a wall and you try to do one of these exterior renderings, it's not going to work. So uh, if your ins, if your camera, if the placement of your camera is inside the walls and you have four walls and a ceiling overhead, you will definitely want to use these interior renderings, um, or it's not going to work. And then you have the choice within those three, where you have just sun only, sun in your artificial lights, or artificial lights only. Now, basically, what it's talking about about your artificial lights, these are the lights that you've be, you've added um, in your uh, ceiling plan. So um, when you put in re lights in Revit, these actually will admit real light. Um, well, not real light, but rendered light. So if I go right, um, sorry, if I go to edit this light fixture here, all right, all that information is controlled down here. So this is your um, lumens per watt. Uh, this is the temp color temperature of that light, uh, 4,230 4, Kelvin. Um, and then light loss factors, I usually just switch this to just plain old um, luminous intensity, because that way you can just say, okay, well, that's 4,010 4, candelas, you know, or something like that. So um, that basically is just controlling the amount of light that those light fixtures are, are emitting for that rendering. Um, and so when I do that, I usually do a luminous intensity and you know, sometimes I'll bump it up to 10. Sometimes you have to, I, I found with, with um, doing interior renderings in Revit, you really do have to kind of crank up the, the amount of lumens that those light fixtures are producing to get a really good quality rendering. So I usually go up to about 10,000, 10 to 12,000, somewhere, somewhere between 10,000 and 15,000 um, lumens, actually, sorry, luminous flux, sorry, lumens. So if I go to 12,000 lumens, then that should do it, all right, for those. And what that does is that's a, um, a type parameter, so that's going to basically change all of my light fixtures in here uh, to 12,000 lumens. All right, so I've changed these guys to uh, higher higher output for lumens, and then um, and actually I can take you to a let's set up a camera in that that space. All 
All right, so there's my, oops, I'm a little bit high, sorry, up in the ceiling. All right, so there's my light fixtures, and let me go to visibility graphics. All right, and I'm going to go to my light fixtures. All right, hit the little plus sign next to them. I can show, it can show light source. So I can say, okay, show light source. So these little yellow uh, pieces here are basically the light that's emitting out of that, um, that uh, light fixture. All right, so that's basically what controls it. Um, and so just so you know that, just so you know, when you put a light fixture in, it usually does put out light, and that's what it uses to uh, create these renderings um, in Revit. All right, so let's go back to our render dialog box. All right, so that's what it's talking about with um, artificial lights. And then also in here, there's a way of, um, let's do the interior, artificial only. All right, so then in here, you can control uh, which artificial lights are on. Obviously, if you have lights on the second floor and you're doing a first floor rendering, you want to turn those second floor lights off. Um, so uh, so you'll want to kind of uh, uncheck those fixtures um, on the second floor so that you're not using wasting rendering time for it to do the calculations to calculate that light up there. Um, all right, so that basically is how you turn on and off your uh, your light fixtures. And then you can pick your background. So if you want a few clouds or very cloudy, or you can add an image file to the background, you can do that. Um, haze, I hardly ever use. I don't know. I don't like hazy views. I don't know. And uh, so I usually don't ever use that, but that basically adds a little, little bit of haze into your view to... I guess maybe give it a more realistic um, look. And then uh, this usually doesn't show up until after um, after it's rendered, but I usually don't even mess with this. Usually uh, when it finishes rendering, I don't, I don't, I've never really messed with uh, adjust exposure. All right, so once it finishes rendering, um, let's actually, actually, let's click it and let's say render. All right, so I hit the render button. This dialog box will pop up. All right, and it does some calculations, so it does some cranking, so it'll crank away for a little bit here. Um, so right now it's at 0%. And then once it gets to about 10%, then the screen um, will show back up again. So it, so once it gets going, then it your view goes away. All right. So once it gets to about yeah 10%, then usually this black screen shows up. And this black screen stays in place till, uh, for about, uh, till it gets it to about 50%. Then once it get to, gets to 50%, then you can actually see it building the uh, um, what the rendering is actually going to look like. So it cranks away here, and this little box here basically says it's working on this section of the rendering here. And it'll bounce around for a little while. But yeah, like I was saying, once it gets to about uh, 50%, that's when the actual rendering starts showing up. And it'll take you a few passes to kind of get things right, you know, to, to uh, uh, get the view to kind of looking a little bit right. Um, so I usually have to do a lot of these test renderings, renderings um, until I get the lights just right, or the materials just right, or I find mistakes that are actually in the model, um, and then I have to fix those, so I have to tweak those a little bit. But let's see if we can wait till it gets to 50%, and then it'll start showing you what the rendering looks like, and then I'll stop it at that point. So 44%, 46 48 all right, there it goes. So once you get to 50%, then it starts showing what that uh, view is going to look like. And you can see this is, the, I used um, screen resolution, and I think medium quality, so it didn't really give a very good, you know, this is pretty, a, a pretty low, low resolution um, rendering. And this is really just to kind of look at what it looks like, um, you know, material-wise and layout-wise and all that kind of stuff. So not, not so great resolution on that one. Um, I could show you examples. These are a couple examples of renderings that I've done with, uh, with uh, Revit. So these are renderings done in Revit with Revit models. Um, so this is an interior rendering. And these are Revit trees kind of in the background. All right, so that's an interior view. This is another interior view with Revit. The only thing I did in Photoshop here was added the fire in the fireplace. All right, so you get some kind of natural sunlight showing up on the floor, things like that. Uh, this is an exterior view. And these are trees that are come with the, uh, def with the uh, base package of, of Revit. All right, here's some more water in the pool. It renders that. Um, the stone on the outside here was one I made in Photoshop. I just basically took some pictures of stone and kind of spliced them together to make a uh, a JPEG image of it. And then here's the outside. I added these plants and trees, and these are plants and trees that come with the the uh, uh, Revit package. So I just kind of dropped them in and rendered them like that. So it does a, it does a pretty decent job. I mean, I still think that 3D Studio 
probably will do a better job of of uh, doing the renderings. But when you think about well, the you know Revit is about seven thousand cop seven thousand dollars for the full copy, and 3D Studio would probably be another four thousand. So most architecture firms probably wouldn't buy a license for both. Um, so you may just find yourself just with uh, with the Revit. So once it uh, finishes, then you have the choice to either save it to the project. All right, so I'm going to say um, interior rendering one. All right, and then I'm going to say OK. And so what it did, then I saved that interior view. So what it did was it created a new category here called renderings. And, um, and it basically put that in, uh, Keep, keeps that view in there. So now I can add that view onto my sheets. All right. Then the other option too is you can export that view as a JPEG image. So you can also save it outside of Revit. So if you wanted to put it in something else, um, you could do it that way too. All right. And I could say show the model. The other thing that's kind of handy here is this region button. So if I select the region button, what it does is um, you'll see this little orange uh, box here, and I can pick it, and basically it will just render what's inside that box. So if I don't want to waste the time or waste my time, you know, looking to see what the whole view is going to look like, I can just render that section of it there. And so that's what the region does. So the region is really something you'd use when you're just doing quickie, you know, testing it out and doing test renderings and just seeing what your materials look like. So that's the the rend region button. So just select check that box, select the box, and then you can use then you can stretch that uh view. All right, so show the rendering. All right, so once you have that view created, then let me go to my sheet, and you just basically plop it on there um, just like you would any other view. So let me go up to that interior rendering view. All right, and I drag it. So I'm using a push down to my left mouse button, select it, drag it over, let go, and drop it onto the sheet. And these are actually, um, let's see, I think, let's see if I can remember how to stretch that view. If I go to activate view, I think it's what I do. Yeah. Okay, so if I want to resize this view, these are this is a little bit easier than doing a Revit view. What I, if I want to resize this view, I select it, I right click, and I say activate view, select the image, and now I can just stretch it. And it maintains those proportions, so I can just stretch that thing a little bit larger. All right, then right click, deactivate view, and then move my title block down that way. So that basically allows you to kind of stretch that view and, and, uh, and tweak it a little bit. So, all right, so that's basically the kind of the basics of rendering in Revit.